Hey, hey, hey guys! It's your girl Nadge. I am back here for another video and I'm so happy that you joined me today. If you haven't already, please do me a favor. Go ahead and take your little finger and click that like and subscribe button. Click the bell so you always know when I post video. Guys, we need to talk about how I feel like the UK just misses Meghan Markle. And if you miss her, just say, we miss you. <laughs> you don't have to go through all of this trashing her, lying, spreading hate, vitriol. If you miss her, just say, I miss you. <laughs> Guys, I also need to talk about, okay, other, other, other married people out there because I have been re-watching Real Housewives of Orange County and you know we love the housewives on this channel. Just looking at it, you know, thinking about my mom, my, my mom and my dad, just looking back on stuff, you know. <laughs> when you get married, you know, when you grow up and you get married and you think back on your, your parents, you know, and their interactions with one another, it just changes the whole perspective for you. And guys, can I just say, any men watching, you guys are so gross. <laughs> gross like I just think back to when I was a kid and you know like girls would say oh boys have cooties like I'm not gonna go near you you got cooties as someone who has been married for a little less than six months now <laughs> I'm 31 young millennial young wife you know like well we'll say relatively young I don't know if I'm that young because in America, you know, people do it quite young, but relatively young wife, relatively new to this wife life. Oh my God, men, you are so gross. Just like little boys, they're the same thing. They should call being married, at least in binary relationships, but we inclusion to everyone, you know, even in, even in, in other, you know, dynamics, other gender norms, there's usually a masculine one and there's usually a feminine one, but I'm just saying, you know, the, the socks, the stanky socks. <laughs> now today, and I'm going to get into Meghan Markle in a second, but I just had to tell you guys this because I thought it was funny. So today I went to my makeup bag. The other day my, my husband asked me to use my tweezers and I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Use, use the tweezers. It's fine. And I was like, what are you doing with that? He's like, oh, I've got this scab on my knee and I want to pick it out because there's like a hair stuck in it and there's like other gook and stuff. And poop. I, I, don't, I don't even really know if I remember, you know, it was late at night, we were in the bed, so I don't even know if I remember the complete logistics of this conversation. All I know is I heard, used your tweezers, pus, ingrown hair, and just like, Oh, it just reminds me of when I was a kid and like my mom would be popping these gigantic pimples on my dad's back or my grandma, which my, my, my parents, they divorced when I was 13, but my grandparents were almost more of like a constant as far as just like that married couple because they were married before my grandma passed. They were married for like 60 something years and you know when you're married for that long, there is a certain level of just familiarity that just becomes, you know? And I just will never forget one day my granddad walked into the kitchen while my grandma was cooking and he had on this pink, like, golf shirt. <laughs> he had on this, like, pink golf shirt and it was so short that, like, you could almost see his stomach and it was so doggone wrinkly, you know, which I don't even really iron my clothes. But, you know, at least if you fold them up, you know, put them in the drawer, they stay fairly okay. But this pink polo shirt, y'all, it was <laughs> like crying at this point. It was like a crop top, like halfway up to his belly. And it was wrinkly as all get out. And I told you guys about my grandma on this channel. She's my guardian angel, but... She just looked at him, looked up and down, looked at him, looked up and down, looked at him, looked up and down. <laughs> she said, you can find a better shirt than that. <laughs> Guys, um, there's all these little quirks that they don't tell you about married life. But I love my husband. He's my heart. Even having me living in a frat house. I love tweezers I don't know exactly what he did with it but like I said there were scabs you know pimples pus 
and growing hair, whatever involved. And so when I went to tweeze my eyebrows, I thought about that and I was like, which I told him, he, he put it back in my makeup bag. And I told him, please just like sanitize that. Like take a, take a wet wipe, an antibacterial wipe and wipe that down or go wash or something. He's like, no, it's fine, baby, trust me. Like it's not touching anything, trust me. Which, you know, for me, I need details. Like I don't know what that means. So for the first time, I think, Ever, I just washed my tweezers. I've never ever had to wash my tweezers before. I've never gotten broken out skin from my tweezers because they don't touch anything. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I thought that was funny. But guys, we need to talk about Meghan Markle and just, <sighs> I feel like people just miss Meghan Markle. Now let me get into this. Let me get into this for a second because Megan, we've talked about her on our channel a lot at this point, and Meghan Markle has received so much criticism over almost anything and everything for eating avocados, for touching her baby bump, for touching her pregnant belly, um, for uh, breaking royal protocol by having a, 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 a what do you call it, a, an irregular seam. Um, being said that she was from Skid Row or Compton, L.A., you know, when she wasn't, she grew up in West Hollywood, a nice area, we know that all of these lies have come out about Meghan Markle. And when we hear about the sort of beef that supposedly went down between Kate and Meghan. Now, I've talked about Kate Middleton on this channel. I think that she's, she's, um, what, what do I want to say? Some of her attributes that I like. She's got this timeless beauty. I really do. People like to, people think just because we're in Sussex Squad that we have to send hate towards Kate. And, and I don't feel that way, you know? Like, I feel like I watched Kate grow up. I watched her, you know, meet the love of her life. They went through college and breaking up and getting back together. I saw that. I see her as someone who has a radiant smile, you know, like people like to talk about it, whatever. And she's a fashionista. Now, I think that her style is more conservative than Meghan Markle. And I think that since all of the scandal, Meghan Markle has basically forced her to take a look at her, her fashion sense. But people like to criticize her a lot. And I, I honestly don't think her fashion sense is that bad. Um, I think that she is a very... I won't say, res yeah, I, actually that's what I would say. I would, I would think, I think she's a reserved person. And I think that's where people slip up with her, right? But hearing about all that drama that went down between Kate and Megan right before her wedding, how Kate sort of threw a hissy fist because, uh, what, what, a hissy fit? What did I just say? Hissy fist? <laughs> How Kate sort of do like a hissy fit because things weren't necessarily going her way, but it wasn't her wedding. She wanted the, the bridesmaids dresses a certain way, which honestly, guys, I'm not going to lie. Even though I love Meghan Markle, those, those bridesmaids dresses were not the cutest to me. So, I can't, I, I can't, okay, I'm not going to get into it because I don't want Sussex Squad to be like, traitor! Um, but yeah, I, I... <laughs> Sussy Squad, don't come after me. I still love you guys and I still love Meghan Markle. But I really don't feel like I have to tear down Kate Middleton to love Meghan Markle. And I feel like nobody else should. Guys, like, take a chill pill. It's okay. We should all be able to get along. The thing is, is that when you look back at old pictures of Kate and Meghan Markle, they actually look like they were building, they were growing a nice friendship. It actually looks like they were growing a nice friendship. I even look back on that interview that they did, you know, William, Kate, Harry, and Meghan, you know, where they talked about being the Fab Four and all of that stuff. And I think that they were on the road to build something really nice. And, you know, I made a video the other day about Lisa Vanderpump, who I love, and I really hope she comes back to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But, um... You know, Lisa Vanderpump, I just find her to be like a stern looking businesswoman, not stern looking, but forward thinking businesswoman. You know, she's about her business and um, she's she's been in a very committed, loving marriage for a very long time. Um, but she's also someone who's humble, who's down to earth. 
Um, she's very intelligent and she doesn't hide it and she's not afraid to hide it. Um, and I just, I find her to be a very genuine person. Someone who's had success and garnered success, but somehow managed to stay themselves. And, um, you know, she had actually had made a quote about Meghan Markle when they left during Megxit. And she had said, you know, I feel bad that, um, they left because I feel like they could have really done some good. Like, I feel like they could have really made some really good changes for the monarchy. And, um, I think you can see that. I think you can see that. You know, it's like, I feel like a lot of people, you know, not just limited to British people, but people all over the world saw this new progressive chapter happening with the monarchy and people were really excited about it. They were like, oh, wow, this is great. And so when that all came crumbling down, not at any fault of Harry and Meghan, completely at the fault of the corrupt UK tabloid media and their toxic connection with the firm, um, you just saw the destruction of all of that hope that the world had kind of had in this. Um, and I feel like a nugget of hope has come back with Harry and Meghan so resiliently and so devotedly committing themselves to, um, you know, you know, sort of shining a light on these problems like institutional racism, racism, like um, xenophobia, like prejudice, like uh, climate change, like, um, you know, gender equality, like feminism, you know, all of these things that they have pointed a light on through the grief that they've experienced through Megxit and all of that. Um, I think it points to how much pride the world quite literally had in them and how excited we were about it. And um, I actually went and looked back at some old British interviews with just the public uh, when, when it first was exposed that Harry and Meghan were dating. And British people, even what seems like the conservative ones, were really excited about it. If you look at Piers Morgan when they first got together, Piers Morgan was even excited about it. And you guys know how we feel about Piers Morgan on this channel. But when Megan started seeing that things were not equal for everyone, there were these unspoken rules between herself, the only person of color, the only American, the only person coming from a, you know, lower middle class background. You can see in lower middle class in terms of, you know, but you can see that, you know, she was like, no, this isn't going to work for me. And I think that's definitely a culture clash because... Americans, we don't live in a monarchy. We don't live in a constitutional monarchy. We live totally in a democracy. We have a president. So it's not like, you know, we have all of these roots within classism and, um, you know, the secession of kings and stuff like that. And so I feel like it was just oil and vinegar. You know, I feel like, but if you think about it, if you think about it, oil and vinegar on some salad, throw some salt on that, throw some pepper on that. A little bit of oregano, maybe put an egg with it, maybe put some ham with it, a little bit of cheese. Very, very tasty. But when you put oil and water in a bottle, they, you can shake it up all you want and it'll mix for a while, but eventually it's going to separate. And I just feel like that's kind of how her background as a strong, independent, vibrant, creative, American mixed race woman up against the monarchy, the British monarchy, you know, the constitutional monarchy, like long live the queen. Yeah, oil and vinegar. But again, oil and vinegar can be very good on salad. <laughs> I think that's the way we need to look at this. But, you know, I was looking at those interviews and people were excited and, and you know, about the stiff British upper lip. So if British people were excited and showing that they were excited, you know they were excited. This was something very, very interesting. And not only that, there's much argument among Sussex Squad, even amongst the derangers, that possibly it wasn't just limited to Megan bringing something representing something progressive into the royal family. It also represented her sort of coming into um, a space where she would really be 
the new kid on the block. You know, she would really be the new shiny toy. She would really be something interesting and different. And so I really think the monarchy not only saw her as, oh, she can help bring us into a new chapter, a new progressive chapter. They also saw this is going to bring great press to the monarchy. But they also saw this could get touchy, too. So I was looking at these old interviews. People were extremely excited about her. And you can just see, you know, the more I look at this story, and I said in my other video that it was very surprising to Megan, which she said in, in the documentary, it was very surprising to her to see that the formality that she saw in public with the, 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 um, the senior members of the royal family, that veneer did not really come down in private, okay? And I said in my last video, the same way I feel like that that was strange to her. I think to um, avid monarchist, you know, even sort of liberal monarchist, but much more than a conservative monarchist, I feel like they had the same difficulty of kind of understanding Meghan's background. Why was she so a beat? Why was she so different? Why was she so like, you know, what seemed to them as self-involved or whatever but to her she was just being herself okay so um I feel like when it hit that point when things got controversial I feel like people sort of shut off and they went towards the negative they antagonized her and some of the little subtle jabs at her that you'd seen in her early on they became really aggressive and I feel like William and Kate were actually probably really excited in the beginning to have sort of a fourth to their threesome, a fourth person to sort of bring in this friendship. I think that the, the tabloids were excited because they would have someone who would be bringing attention to them. They could profitize on this. They can monetize this. And we see now that even though they're gone, Megan's not even talking. They're like, oh, if we can't monetize on the positive, if we can't monetize on you being here with us in line with everything, then we're going to monetize on the hate against you. Maybe it doesn't come out directly like that, but that's how it seems. That's how it seems. And so, you know, I feel like the firm, the senior members of the royal family, the UK, and so many people who spend, uh, I mean, I, I look at some of these accounts on Twitter all day. You have to imagine some of these accounts on Twitter all day, every day, they're talking about Meghan Markle. All day. How can someone occupy that much space in your head and in your heart? Unless you know how they say that hate and love there's a very thin line between hate and love you know it has stepped over into obsession it has stepped over into obsession and it started to make me think you know i feel like this is a toxic expression of someone missing someone but um you know just looking at those pictures of megan making the queen crack up you know Looking at the good old days with Harry and Meghan and Kate and William, um, how in the beginning, Prince Philip and Charles were actually both very, very impressed. They thought that she was a young lady who carried herself very well. Um, looking at that, I can understand how they, they were hurt. I get it. They were hurt. But the problem is, is that Meghan was hurt too. And their response, especially for Harry, since he's caught in the middle of this, and they're making him them choose, they're making Harry choose between the woman he loves, the person who he's been looking for his whole life to help fill that void, you know. And he said in a documentary, "Oh, I think I think Diana and and he thanks his mother and and Megan would have been thick as thieves because they're cut from the same cloth." And people online they'll go and say, "Oh, Kate is way." I'm sorry. Catherine of Wales is way more, you know, uh, closer to Diana. She's more like Diana than Megan is. It's like, why is it such a competition, you guys? So, um, yeah, I think, I think the world should just go ahead and admit that they miss uh, Megan 
Markle. So, a few ways that we want to observe that we know that the world just misses Meghan Markle. First one being South Park. Now, <laughs> as an American who, you know, I, I honestly, South Park was never my cup of tea. I was much more into Family Guy, American Dad, um, home movies, like um, Mission Hill, the Oblongs, you know, that type of stuff, because I guess I'm just too alternative for South Park. But the problem that I have with South Park, you know, even The Simpsons, I really like The Simpsons too. It's like South Park just always was too crude, you know? The, 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 the script of the show is just as crude as the characters drawn on there. And as an artist who went to, who spent a lot of money on a silly liberal arts degree, maybe it's gotten me some nice jobs, but uh, sometimes I think on that. But honestly, being a little bit of an art snob myself, you know, the, the drawings are just as crude as the writing. And sometimes it's like South Park just takes shots because they know it, they can. Whereas I felt like the writing in Family Guy, it was less mean. It was less mean. South Park is just kind of mean. And um, it's been irrelevant. As an American, I'm like, South Park hasn't been relevant since maybe like 2014. So... The fact that everybody's like, oh my god, did you see that Meghan Markle episode? It was so funny. <laughs> oh. It's like, oh yeah, I also saw the, the little snippet of them talking about Prince William pegging himself. So, yeah, I saw that too. Guys, come on. Come on. If you miss the woman, you know, if you want her to come back, because we know that she brought a level of mixing it up, you know, she, she, she mixed it up. So she brought that level of uh, something spontaneous, something new. And if you guys missed that, maybe you shouldn't have driven her out. You know, what, what's the end game, guys? What's the end game? So that is what I think about South Park. And anybody who comes back on my channel and say, oh my God, look at the South Park. I'm not going to look at that. What is I don't have time to waste my time on that. And the writers of South Park should know better because... They know that they're a dying breed, so they're just using, they're jumping on the coattails of the hate bandwagon against Harry and Meghan like so many people are doing. Why? Uh, for attention and for money. So, <laughs> the coronation. The coronation. You know a narcissist has to miss somebody for the whole institution to schedule the coronation on the same day as Harry and Meghan's child. Guys, how petulant and vindictive do you have to get? Okay? And you would argue that that's them, them saying, oh, we're so done with them, we don't care about them, whatever. I would argue it's the opposite. If you're gonna go to that level of going and, you know, scheduling this whole coronation exactly on the day of these people who you've deemed as traitors, on their child's birthday. Oh, you care. You care. And I would say, you actually want them to come. It's almost like they want them to come. They miss them. They don't want to say it. They want them to come so that they can abuse them a little bit more and so that they can, they can, they can assess if they have proven themselves. If Harry and Meghan have proven themselves enough that they would be so committed, as so committed as to come to uh, the coronation for Charles to show we are good little boys, we're dutiful, and even though it's our child's birthday, we're gonna put the crown ahead of everything. <laughs> Let me put my little double chin on here. Um, okay, what else? What else? Um, you can also tell by the ring of derangers. Oh, oh my God. They like to talk about Sussex Squad. I mean, because I really, when I go on YouTube, if I even, now, it used to be where I would put in hashtag Sussex Squad. And I would know that was a surefire way for me to find the videos that, are aligned with what I'm looking for. These are people who support Harry and Meghan and they want only good things for them and they're only talking about 
um, the reality of the situation, the fact that these two humanitarians were totally vilified, okay? The fact that these two humanitarians have been pushed aside, they've been gaslit, um, and how that's not right. And also to celebrate the fact that they are finally safe, prosperous, healthy, um, independent, and free. I knew that when I typed in that one little hashtag, I would be okay. But even now when I type that in, I still find deranger stuff, you know. And there are some of those royal expert channels that will post like three of the same videos, exact same videos, same thumbnail, same video, same audio, everything. And <laughs> you know what it is when it's in all caps. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Samantha Markle is dragging her sister down to hell. Blah, blah, blah. And the artwork, you know, like there is this like formula. The artwork is many times usually like a cutout of Samantha Markle's face or Camilla's face or something. And then it's like a, a thumbnail picture of Megan. And they've caught her in some micro expression. So she looks like this. You know, she looks totally crazy. And there's usually just one word that says like liar, traitor, you know, narcissists. How much do you have to know that this is wrong? This is wrong. It's wrong, guys. But it used to be where I could type in that one little hashtag and I wouldn't see those videos because I don't want to deal with those videos. We know what those videos are. We know what those videos are. Okay. So y'all miss, y'all miss Megan. Okay, we got it. Y'all miss her. <laughs> in your weird narcissist way, this is you showing that you miss her. We get it. Okay. So, the ring of derangers. Now, Always put in hashtag Sussex Squad when I'm looking for updates on Harry and Meghan because I know that'll lead me to the most accurate information that's not biased, that's not, you know, from the people, the very people who are just trying to vilify them and bring them down. When I type in Meghan Markle, Harry and Meghan, no hashtag Sussex Squad, no Sussex Squad, no I support Harry and Meghan, none of that, you know, when I just type their names, 99% of what I see is from the Ring of Derangers. Now, the top of that is going to be the big news, you know, the big news channels. But below that are going to be people like me, but on the other side, you know, the personal, pe the personal commentary, the critic channels. And amongst those, you have channels like Lady Colin C., uh, Camilla Tomini, and this isn't just YouTube, this is this is global. Some of these expand past YouTube. P. Dina, Leilani of Barbados, 99%, <laughs> like literally 99% of any sort of source that calls itself a royal expert. Steph the Alter Nerd, Popcorn Planet, Sean Atwood, Daily Fail, Nate the Lawyer, Bethany Frankel, Angela Levin, Avid Gardener, Megan Kelly. I can keep going on and on. And that is not included the big ones. Again, that's not included the big ones who have enough money to really make sure that they show at the top of your search results. The Sky Newses and the Daily Fails, the Newsweeks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. The Telegraph. So, okay, and I'm actually writing a book. I'm writing a book about being a millennial, finding love, getting married as a millennial since we're basically becoming a instinct, uh, extinct almost. Um, but I talk about my journey and sort of all of the losers that I dated before I met my husband. And I mean, I don't want to go too much into it. You guys will have to get the book when it's done. I don't know when it's going to be done. I'm hoping for some time this year, but I'll keep you updated on that. But the guy who I dated right before I met my husband was diagnosed, um, um, I think that I diagnosed bipolar disorder, if I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> like, I almost haven't thought about this because it's like, I almost like just shut it out of my brain. But 
Um, I think beyond that, he had some personality disorder stuff coming into it. He had some narcissist stuff coming into it. And the fact that people call Megan a narcissist, the fact that I dated someone like this and they were really a narcissist to the point where it could have been dangerous. Thank goodness I got out before it, it, it ever, you know, came into that. But I just remember, you know, during this whole toxic pull back and forth, which I think happens in millennial relationships a lot, which is why I'm, I'm trying to write a book to help others going through, you know, difficulty finding their person or others who are preparing maybe to get married and maybe they're having difficulties because I feel like us, we, us as a generation moving into, you know, where we're getting married, we're having kids and stuff, we have some unique issues. And just before this toxic guy, before we had sort of gotten to the point where I knew it was time to let this go, it was time to move on, we couldn't keep just hurting each other. Um, I clearly wasn't helping his mental health by staying. And um, they call this thing with nar narcissists when they have discarded you. There, there's these different phases with narcissists, if people know about it. There's the love bombing phase, which is usually in the beginning or is after you've left and they want you to pull you back in. That's when they love bomb you. It's when they tell you, you're the most amazing, incredible person I've ever met. You're so cool. Oh my God, I wrote in my diary about you today. I told my best friend about you. I'm obsessed with you. I love you, okay? And then, you know, you do something that the narcissist deems as an attack or antagonizing or as triggering towards maybe their childhood issues or whatever they're dealing with. And that's when the abusive phase comes and it's mentally abusive or it's physically abusive. It was never physically abusive with me, but it could be just toxic, mean, nasty, negative, dark, you know, and it's just like they're throwing all of this abuse at you. And of course, for the empath, the victim, their instinct is to at first maybe help them. And then they get caught in the cycle of, um, you know, love bombing and then abusing, love bombing and abusing. And, but when the, when the empath or the, the victim walks away, what the narcissist does is this phase called hoovering. And for people watching outside of the U.S. for this, uh, the Hoover is like a vacuum cleaner. It's a vacuum cleaner brand in the U.S. or whatever. And so, you know, when you Hoover, you vacuum clean or whatever, and you pick up the stuff, it suctions it up and you know, so that's what the narcissist does in that phase is like they come back because they need to pick you back up. And that's when they go back into the love bombing again. And it's like they're relentless until they can pull you back in. So the fact that, um, you know, I see people antagonizing Harry and Meghan like this about being narcissists and stuff. These people clearly have never encountered real narcissists. But I do think the way in which the UK, the UK media, and the people who were so gullible enough to just hang on to every single lie and propaganda against Harry and Meghan that the UK media did, I feel like they took on the embodiment of the narcissist, which is so ironic they, that they call her a narcissist because, you know, they, they love-bombed Meghan in the beginning, and then she showed that she had a mind of her own and that, you know, things that were not so great with her, she was going to maybe call out. And Harry supported her in that. And then that's when the abuse came. Right. And then they started hoovering because she left. She's like, okay, I'm checking out, I'm going my own way, I'm gonna create a podcast. You know, I'm gonna go and explore myself, discovery myself, transformation. And that whole monster that is the corrupt UK tabloid media and its cronies came back and they hoovered Megan on up, right? Okay, and disparaged her all down again, broke her down, and then maybe they came back and built her up again. So this is probably some point at like 2018, 2019. I, I, I feel like the 2018, 2019 phase, really before they left, is that whole cycle of love bombing, um, abuse, Hoovering, love bombing, abuse, hoovering. It's like over and over and over and over again. And so, um, yeah, when she, when they were finally like, we can't take it anymore, that's when it was just abuse. There was no more love bombing. It was just abuse. Attack, 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 attack. 
And to look at the amount of obsession that she gets, and like I said, that people would go on Twitter, on YouTube, on Reddit every single day, committed to hating on this woman like it's their stamp collection, okay? And I understand because I got my canvas, I got my painting materials over here. I love to paint. I love to sketch and draw with charcoal. You know, they treat hating on Megan like their paint with their easel and their charcoal, you know, that they go and work on every day. And that's, that's, that's their hobby. Why is that? I feel like it's because they miss, they miss, they miss Megan. Just the way that a narcissist, an extremely narcissistic person could miss a victim. And, and the, the crazy, crazy ex that I told you guys about, that happened, you know, when I finally was like, okay, you have mentally abused me enough, you have mistaken me for someone who's going to sit here and deal with this craziness, mm-mm, uh-uh, because this one here, who was raised by, uh-uh, not, not the one who's going to raise a child like that, no, this was not the person who was going to deal with that, fool me once, okay, fool me twice, okay, three times, I'm out, and I was out, you know, and when I was done, I was done, okay, but I still got these messages on Facebook, and it was just like he was having a dialogue with himself, he was like, you know, you B-I-T-C-H, you ruin my life, you do this, you do that, you know, you're so sanctimonious, you think you're inferior, and then, you know, the next pocket of messages would be oh my god I, I i can't live without you i i want to you know have children with you i want to build a life with you you make me better and then there'd be another pocket of messages you can think ammonia bitch blah 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 da, 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 da. it's just like okay. because that is the way a narcissist a toxic person misses their victim you know now, I think in terms of the senior members of the royal family, there's, you can put a little bit more of just simple human emotion to it. And I think they actually just miss Harry and Meghan. And I include Meghan in that. I think that they do. I think that they're very prideful. They're a little bit butt hurt. <laughs> they're a little bit butt hurt. And so... You know, I feel like that's what that's what we kind of take a look at and they don't they don't love so much. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for being with me today. If you have not already, like I said, please go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. Uh click the bell so you know whenever I post video and I will see you in the next one. Okay.